The White House is one of the oldest buildings in the United States, with many stating that spirits roam its grounds. They've heard laughter echoes in the halls and felt eerie cold spots at night. However, is there any truth to these paranormal tales? Today on Top 5 Scary Videos, I'm going to be counting down our list of the top 5 scary paranormal hauntings in the White House. Before we begin though, be sure to stick around until the end of the video where I'll be responding to some of your comments. And with that, Let's jump in. Coming in at number five, we have the ghost of Anna Surratt. Now, as we will go on to talk about later, John Wilkes Booth was the man responsible for assassinating Abraham Lincoln. However, his name wasn't the only one connected to the assassination. John Wilkes Booth had an entire gang. One of the sadder names connected to the assassination is that of Anna Surratt. Anna is remembered chiefly for her heartbreaking and unsuccessful efforts to save her mother Mary from being hanged by the US government as a member of the John Wilkes Booth gang. Anna spent 24 hours trying to save her mother's life, visiting the White House twice in an effort to get President Johnson to halt the execution. Mary Surratt was ultimately executed, however, history wasn't quite done with Anna yet. She reappeared in the public eye and even became an issue in the 1880 presidential election. By the time Anna died on October 24, 1904, public opinion largely regarded Mary Surratt as the innocent victim of prosecutorial zeal, and Anna was remembered in the words of the Baltimore American for her utmost devotion and self-sacrifice in the closing hours of Mrs. Surratt's life. Now, many of the more recent residents of the White House have sworn the ghost of Anna Surratt haunt the grounds, with many hearing knocks on the front doors pleading for the release of her mother, Mary Surratt. Coming in at number four, we have the ghost of David Burns. Jared Broach is the founder of the Nightly Spirits Company, which offers tours of haunted areas in several cities across the United States. However, when Broach started the tours back in 2012, he offered only one, the White House. I quote, the White House has the best ghost stories and I'd call them the most verified. Honestly, we could do a 10 hour tour if we really wanted to. Now his favorite story is that of David Burns, who sold the land where the White House sits and whose voice has been heard in the Oval Office countless times. David Burns was said to be an argumentative, controversial Scotsman who despite his great wealth, never got rid of his original home, which was a humble cottage overlooking Constitution Avenue. When David Burns died, he left his daughter his entire and very substantial estate State, telling her from his deathbed, Marsha, you've been a good daughter. You'll now be the richest girl in America. She was said to be the richest woman in America at the time. Now, like I said, since his death, Burns' ghost has been seen in the Oval Office, where a reporter told a security guard during the Truman administration that while standing in the yellow Oval Room, he heard a whisper which said, I'm Mr. Burns. Coming in at number three, Jenna Bush Hager's ghostly experience. Now, as it has become clear already, the White House has certainly seen its share of ghosts. However, Jenna Bush Hager has one of the more creepy stories to come from the presidential home. In a conversation with Hoda, Jenna recalled the time she and her twin sister, Barbara Bush, may have encountered the undead while living in the White House during their dad's time as president, aka George W. Bush, who was the 43rd president of the United States, who ran from 2001 to 2000. According to Jenna, the sisters were in their shared bedroom when Jenna's phone rang. I quote, it woke us up in the middle of the night. We had a fireplace in our room and all of a sudden we started hearing 1920s piano music as clear as day coming out of the fireplace. According to Jenna, it was incredibly spooky and she jumped in her sister's bed. To make things more terrifying, it wasn't a one-time thing. I quote, the next week we had the same thing, but this time opera. She also recalled telling one of the White House staffers about her experience, who apparently promptly responded with, Oh, Jenna, you wouldn't believe what I've heard. Coming in at number two, President Harry S. Truman's ghostly surprise. Harry S. Truman was the 33rd president of the United States, serving from 1945 to 1953, succeeding upon the death of Franklin D. Roosevelt after serving as vice president. During his term, he implemented the Marshall Plan to rebuild the economy of Western Europe and established the Truman Doctrine and NATO. However, we're not talking about him as a president. We're discussing his ghostly encounter in the White House during his presidency. On one lonely night in 1946, it is said that President Harry S. Truman went to bed around 9 p.m. However, about six hours later, he heard something at his door, a knock, knock, knock. The banging awoke him. He wrote to his wife in a letter that is archived in the Presidential Library and Museum. I quote, I jumped up and put on my bathrobe. I opened the door and no one was there. Went out, looked up and down the hall, looked in your room and Margie's. Still no one. Went back to bed after locking the doors and there were footsteps in your room whose door I'd left open open. 
jumped and looked, and no one was there. The damn place is haunted, sure as shooting. The Secret Service said not even a watchman was up here at the hour. You and Margie had better come back and protect me before some of these ghosts carry me off. And finally, coming in at number one, Abraham Lincoln. As most of you will know, or at least should know, Abraham Lincoln was the 16th president of the United States from 1861 to 1865. He led the nation through its greatest moral, constitutional, and political crisis in the American Civil War. But more notably, he abolished slavery and modernized the US economy. However, on April 14, 1865, Lincoln was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth while attending a play at Ford's Theatre with his wife. Booth entered the back of Lincoln's theatre box, crept up from behind, and fired at the back of Lincoln's head, mortally wounding him. After remaining in a coma for eight hours, Lincoln passed away on April 15th. Now, as you might expect, there have been several stories about ghosts of former presidents haunting the White House, but perhaps the most common and popular is that of Lincoln. Lincoln's ghost, otherwise known as the White House ghost, Ghost, is said to have haunted the White House since his death in 1865. Lincoln's ghost is also said to haunt many of his former residences in Springfield, Illinois, including his former law office. Theodore Roosevelt and Maureen Reagan and her husband have all claimed to have seen a spectral Lincoln in the White House, and on one occasion, Roosevelt's personal valet ran screaming from the White House claiming he had seen Lincoln's ghost. However, arguably the most famous incident was in 1942 when Queen Wilhelmina of the Netherlands allegedly heard footsteps outside the White House bedroom and answered a knock on the door, only to see Lincoln in a frock coat and a top hat standing in front of her. She promptly fainted. However, one of the more famous stories came from none other than British Prime Minister Winston Churchill. He loved to retire late, take a long hot bath while drinking a scotch and smoke a cigar and relax. However, on one occasion, he climbed out of the bath and was startled to see Lincoln standing by the fireplace in his room, leaning on the mantel. Churchill promptly stated, "'Good evening, Mr. President. You seem to have me at a disadvantage.'" According to the former Prime Minister, Lincoln smiled softly and then disappeared. Well, there we have it. Do you guys agree with our list? Are there any paranormal hauntings that we missed? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below, and perhaps we can do a part two. Before I go though, I just want to respond to a few comments from one of our last videos. Top five scary horror games that should be illegal. Sans underscore the epic skeleton 22 said, I don't think this should be illegal, but it's really horrifying to ever exist though. I couldn't agree more. Nothing should be illegal. Well, that's not true. Things should be illegal. But games should not be illegal. Except Manhunt 2, especially on the Wii. Brian Baker said, Amnesia, you're alone, unarmed, and unsure of how you got there. Sounds like most Sunday mornings to me. <laughs> Sounds like every day to me, to be honest. Luchi Club Studio said, Manhunt 2 was on the Wii. Yes, yes it was. And it was a great time. And I got it for Christmas when I was way too young. I don't think my parents understood what that game was. I don't think they still understand. I should talk to them about it. Last Toss said, Lucy, I thought you left the channel. Glad you're back, I'll start watching again. I don't know why a lot of you think I left the channel. I've literally never left the channel. I've been on it since the beginning, to be honest. So clearly you just stopped watching and that's on you. That's a you problem. Ward Alien Video said, Lucy is starting to sound more American. Um, okay, that's not my problem. I've lived in North America for over 10 years. So that's just bound to happen. But thank you. And on that note, if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss another scary bit. And until next time, see you later.